So as far back as I can remember, I've had this reoccurring dream. So the dream usually starts with me freezing cold. I'm crouched in a corner of a dark room. Standing before me is a haggish, cackling, dark figure over a cauldron of a green, bubbling, oozing, viscous goo that's emitting this pungent yet spell-binding odor. It throws up a ribbon of pearly white fog that stretches to each corner of the room. The room made of stone and timber, all stuck together with ancient sod. And high up in the corner, perched in a windowsill, a single crow, screaming, as if to say, leave this place, never return. I get up, and I go to the only door in the room. That door, a wooden monstrosity. I open it up. I find myself in an open meadow with twisted weeds and tall blades of grass. I stumble over and over again, trying to find my footing. But something urges me to look back. And high up in the window stands the old woman with her bewitching eyes, beckoning me to return. And with close and careful consideration, I do. Okay, so maybe I was being a little dramatic, but Although that might sound like a terrifying nightmare to have over and over and over again, it's actually exhilarating and really exciting. I've always been fascinated with the fictitious caricatures of witches from literature and all sorts of fiction. The evil witch from Snow White, the wicked witch of the West. So the candle I would like to speak about today is an old friend one that I anxiously anticipate breaking out every Halloween season. Well, that's going to be, of course, the Witch's Brew, my confidant. Now, if you're familiar with this candle, you might understand that the focal point of this scent is patchouli. And although that might seem like that's all there is, this is a very deep, complex, structured candle with many subtleties. If your association with patchouli brings you far away from Halloween, I understand that, but I urge you to take a second look. Patchouli is alive in New Paltz, New York, and that's where we're going next. So right now, I'm at Wings Castle in Millbrook, New York. And if you like what you see, you must, you must visit this place. The candle is called Witch's Brew. Without smelling, what would you imagine that would smell like? Gosh, I guess witches kind of, for me, have like maybe like an autumn fragrance. Okay. Yeah. Sort of what I imagine is a, sort of that like nature fall smell, that really earthy kind of um, dead leaf kind of smell, yeah. like in a positive way. Just, just to give that cap a smell. And just give me your initial impressions. Definitely has that like uh, sense memory autumn kind of feel to it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what spice I'm smelling. Uh, it smells familiar. Like a, yeah, it definitely smells familiar. Does it, it remind you like, of New Paltz? Uh, it reminds me of my grandma's house. Okay. Like, yeah, you know, she always had like little dishes of uh, potpourri, and a lot of them yeah. had like um, just like nature stuff, like pine cone. But it's got this. I don't want to say it's cinnamon or or cardamom or something, but something that like. I don't know, it smells like my grandma's house, that's good. you know? So um, that's, I'm guessing, a, a, it's a happy smell. It's a happy yeah, association. Yeah, definitely. Would this put you into the Halloween spirit? Or does it bring you somewhere else? Um, I'd say Halloween, more specific, maybe not so much associated with uh, that date specifically as, as much as like a late fall kind okay. of, you know? Thank uh, you my are. name is Allison Ferrara. Um, I work at Kentucky, which is an international bazaar, but a lot of what we deal with is essential oils, candles, incense, 
I've been working here so long that I no longer smell the incense, <laughs> but everyone says it's wonderful when they first walk in. You, you know? got a good nose? Yeah, yeah, a pretty good nose, but I've been so familiar with the place that like yeah. my olfactory senses are just like, oh, this is, you know. Normal, like. <laughs> Anyone that uses the word olfactory, I know that they have a good sense of smell. <laughs> Or how familiar are you with Miles Davis's album, Bitches Brew? Uh, I guess I'm fairly familiar. I mean, it's one of it's it's got to be in in the kind of broad American cultural pantheon of like famous jazz albums that people who don't even like jazz know about. The the choice behind the title yeah. of the album. I don't I don't know that I would describe Bitches Brew, even though it alludes to Witches Brew as especially a cult. My understanding of the title is it is a riff on Witch's Brew, but I, there, I, this is sort of like Chestnut that I always hear is that Betty Davis, who's like the funk the funk singer, that sh she was the bitch in Bitch's Brew. I don't know if oh, that's really? true or not. That's my understanding of the title. Bitch's Brew is a, a perennial example of what's called fusion, which was very controversial at the time and perhaps re remains controversial among jazz purists. And like it has a instrumentation and arrangements that were um, a, a radical departure from traditional jazz. What would you fathom, you know, a candle smelling like if it were titled Witch's Yeah, Brew? so I would think it would smell bad because I'm thinking of like a witch's cauldron and I'm thinking of like something like green and bubbling and I'm thinking of the scene in Clash of the Titans and I'm thinking that that probably smelled bad. So what would be some of the in ingredients? Yeah, cauldron? like uh, sticks, mold, parts of babies. Um, and then yes, green stuff. I don't know, it would bubble. I'm thinking of like hags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, smelly? Just smell the top. I think that will be sufficient okay. for our purposes here. You're good. And just Whoa. initial impressions. Uh, very, very, very autumnal, I guess, because it kind of has like a wood, a wood thing going on. Um, it smells kind of thick. Um, it feels kind of like I like I like icy. I don't know. It sort of like gives me chills, which sort of makes sense. Maybe why it would be called witches brew. If you had to like paint a portrait for me, like if you close your eyes, you smell this with with the name in mind, witches brew. I mean, what are we what are we seeing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of seeing like, um, and this is maybe overly cinematic. We are where the witch was, and we're not supposed to be there, and she's not there. It's very gray. There, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm feeling. That's what I'm thinking as a as a tableau. Well, is this something that you would burn during the Halloween season? Would it put you into the Halloween spirit? Yeah, maybe, man. I, you know, I'm not I'm not a candle guy per se. Where I mean, I I enjoy I enjoy them, but I do not seek them out or match yeah. scents and fragrances to occasions. With this smell, you smelled it now. Witches brew. Give me like you would a wine and food pairing. Give me oh, a no. scent. Okay. And horror film and or music pairing. With this. With that candle specifically. Oh man, that's tough. <laughs> um, I mean It's also tough because I watch movies a lot, so I'm just kinda like inclined. Um so I'll go with The Fog, John Carpenter. Like being like kind of like covered in a in a faint horror rather than a, you know, Something like that. Like it feels like a place, like an empty place or something. I don't know. Um, that's what I got. Um, it kind of, or like you know, because that movie has a great sense of place, and I feel like this smells like a place. Tom. Tom. Nice to meet you, man. Meet you. Okay, so I found a few things. Candy corn. Lantern. This is unscented. Tuscany candle. Candy corn. Scented candle. Which looks like it's a gel candle with real candy corn inside. Interesting because it does smell like candy corn, but it actually smells more like buttered 
popcorn, like movie theater buttered popcorn or jelly belly buttered popcorn. It does smell like candy corn, but it reminds me more of popcorn. Unscented, but LED flameless candle trick or treat. Now this doesn't have a battery inside, so I can't turn it on, but I would imagine that would look pretty cool. But what I came across, uh, this right here, Do you remember now and later candies? Well, this smells like a grape now and later candy. It says blueberry scented candle. Is this name misrepresenting the smell? Witch's brew, right? So smell this candle, get the camera going. Just give me your, your basic thoughts. What you smell, whether you like it, whether you think it's representative of witch's brew. Uh, like actual witches brew. Well, all right, I guess. Does it put you in the Halloween spirit? <laughs> give, give it a smell. See what you think. Right. I'm just getting my sniffer up. <laughs> getting ready and going. Is the camera rolling? The camera is rolling. All right. <coughs> witches brew candle. Now I'm gonna smell it and see what scents we have in here. This is mostly scented like grape soda. I don't yeah. essentially think that is genuine of a witch's brew. It mostly have to smell like um, something herbal, like sage or wormwood. And but when you're looking for a witch's brew type candle, it has to have an herbal scent. Like it's actually like comes right up out of the ground. I know where to find something like that. You, you do or you don't? I do. I very much do. Where's that? Uh, the Dreaming Goddess, Raymond Avenue. Right um, next to the Vassar College. You'll have to go up these steps. It's not a very long walk up the steps, yeah. but near the back wall, yeah. past the tarot card rack, there's a whole list of candles. One that says, sucks to be you, cool. and it will have an herbal scent to it. Now, you want me to smell that one? Yeah, so much different approach. Okay, with this much one. different approach. So, Yankee Candle. All right, hold on one minute. Sure, sure. Looks like you've done this before. Yeah, I'm very good at sensing odors. Great. Yeah, in this one, cloves, holly, ginger spice, that's the sort of scent I'm getting off of this one. Do you like that? Does that does that provoke the Halloween spirit for you? That is more like Christmas. Really? Okay. And that is grape soda. I spoke to you. Kyle Lang. <laughs> I wish I had my business I card. I wish I had. And then I, I'm a wood carver. I make okay. wands and staffs and uh, this is right up my alley. So do you have an Instagram people can Oh no, I don't or... do things over the internet. I'm no. old fashioned. You, you call me over the phone. Call me over the phone. Yeah. Okay. All right, and it's Kyle Lang. Kyle Lang. You could also reach me at um, gmail at kwizard333 at gmail.com. Beautiful. All right. Hey. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks so much, bud. You're welcome. <laughs> So I'm at a really cool spot in New Pulse, New York. We're at the Water Street Market. And I'm gonna walk around, probably get another coffee, uh, but I'm also gonna try to ask a few folks about the Witch's Brew candle. I'm gonna try to get some feedback, see what they think of the candle. So if we were going to make a candle, the three of us, which is brew, what should it smell like? Probably like rotten eggs or like dirty asparagus. Dirty eggs, rotten asparagus. You think anybody would buy that? <laughs> no. No. I would like to. I was just thinking of like a witch's brew. It's like evil and disgusting. Yeah. So go ahead and smell that cat right there. Okay. And just initial thoughts. Mm, like a little bit lavendery and peppery. Like cracked black pepper? Yeah, definitely could be. Yeah, definitely like salt, like pepper. Yeah, I smell lavender and pepper, yeah. Does this put you in the Halloween spirit? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it smells like it's, fall. It smells a lot like fall. I don't know, there's something about it that's just very... 
Does it remind you of New Paul's? Yeah, de oh, definitely New Paul's. Um, we're the Parish rest Restaurant in uh, the Water Street Market, New Paltz, New York, and we're, we feature Cajun and Creole influences on our cooking. It's called Witch's Brew. Yeah. And so I just want you to smell that cap and just give me your initial thoughts. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, definitely autumn. It's got that like clove, a little anise, maybe a little cinnamon in the background. Would this put you into the, the Halloween spirit? Would you burn this? Yeah, that definitely reminds me of fall. I got some candles here. Any of these look familiar? Oh. Wow, it's so good. What I got here is a, a ginger beer. Yeah. I wanted to do a retrospective of Yankee Candles, Witches Brew. Every year they give us something a little bit different as far as the, the look or the aesthetic, the, the labeling of the jar. So I wanna kinda show you how this candle and the look has evolved throughout the past several years. One thing I think is clear is that the recipe for patchouli is almost identical, if not identical, to Witch's Brew. At home goods and places like that will carry it during the Halloween season. So if you want to get your hands on Witch's Brew because it's sold out this year, or if you want to get your hands on Witch's Brew for a little bit smaller price, I want to go on the record and say this was one of my favorite looks for Witch's Brew. The color combination, the hologram label, the bony bunch character figure. We see we have clear glass, which would be eventually changed. I just love the contrast of black and purple. And people always ask me about expiration or shelf life. And you know what? This is not as intense as the 2016 or the 15, but it really hasn't faded that much at all. It's a little bit dusty. These have been sitting comfortably on my shelves. We finally had a change of color in the glass. This is uh, not a completely opaque jar, but it is tinted black. Uh, we have the ribbon around the circumference, but the main artwork on the candle, there it is. So kind of a jack-o'-lantern slash skeleton. We got away from the clear glass. We got away from an actual physical label. That's not a label. That's painted on there, right? You can't peel that off. Also, when you burn these candles, let's say you got that wax to about right there. When that candlelight is flickering from inside, you're going to see that light shining through the glass. And it looks so cool. You kind of get this dingy, dirty, uh, medicinal, witch jar looking uh, glass that that light has a chance to shine through. 2012. Now this is when things got really, really interesting. As you can see, we still have the ribbon but this year they provided us with a 360 degree panoramic view of all of these wonderfully playful Halloween iconic images, including the witch on the broom flying over the crescent moon, accompanied by her cats with little uh, markings of pumpkins and bats and skulls throwing her magic and spells across the countryside, down below, unsuspecting neighborhoods and houses. Got a little frog right there. Following the 13, the 2014, we saw some more changes. We have that orange ribbon, the crescent moon, the crescent moon right there, orange. We turn it every hour. And it looks like you have a brand new candle. You could put it on a tabletop and you have a, 
a 360 degree label. Now, last year, 2015, an almost uh, minimalistic artwork with the witch's hat, with a little spider brooch against a frame of cobwebs. But I think the best part about this candle was the translucency of the glass. You see it's not clear. You see how it's kind of gray up top, but as we go down further to the bottom, we have much more of a black tint. And that light shines through the glass. You really, it really does look like you have this super old, antique, dingy, dusty, witch container, witch mason jar that's been sitting on a shelf for decades. 2016, this year, was probably the most different out of this entire lineup here. We've got the new Yankee Candle font on top of the jar. Uh, pretty opaque, dark colored glass, jet black. The image of spiders on uh, a series of cobwebs. The spiders aren't really fleshed out like realistic spiders, as you can see. They are much more uh, kind of uh, like a chicken scratch, scribble, the suggestion of spiders. I need to know, what's your guys' opinion? Which is your favorite look? Which one was most successful for you? Which one would be most exciting for you to break out and burn during the season of Halloween? So I talked to a lot of great folks today, got a lot of great opinions and comments, feedback on the Yankee Candle, Witch's Brew Candle. A lot of great descriptors, a lot of great observations that I got from all of these folks. But now it's my turn, it's my time. Got the candle in my backpack here. I'm gonna break it out, smell it, give you a list of some of the observations, the descriptors I would use to describe that candle. So let's do it. All right, let's talk about patchouli. Now, I don't think anyone's gonna argue when you say patchouli is kind of the focal point of this candle. Some people might think that it's only patchouli in this candle. Of course, there's a lot more going on. Now, what's interesting about patchouli is that it's a part of the mint family. And I'm mentioning that because there's a, a cooling sensation when I smell this candle. Uh, think about you know, if you smell Listerine or Scope or Hall's mentholated cough drops, if you smell that, it kind of cools your nasal passages, and that's what's happening. Now, it's hard for me to say whether or not that's because of the patchouli or because perhaps I think that there might be some birch in this candle as well, meaning that they've actually put some birch essential oil in this candle because birch has a very wintergreen or evergreen component to its smell, to its aroma profile. Definitely getting that cooling sensation. All right, something that really puts me in the Halloween spirit, licorice root. Think of black licorice. Some great observations that some folks uh, mentioned today were baking spices and there's a lot of baking spices going on here one of those baking spices that came up was clove if you're familiar with clove if you've ever used it in the kitchen or if you've ever been around someone who was smoking a clove cigarette and smelled some of that smoke there's definitely clove here another descriptor people were using was cinnamon and i think that's a great call Definitely more of that spicy cinnamon. Think of hot tamale candy uh, cinnamon or like big red chewing gum cinnamon. There's that spiciness to it. But honestly, if you ask me, I think there's even more nutmeg than there is cinnamon. Cardamom. All right, one of my favorite categories to talk about is earthiness. 
there is an extraordinary amount of earthiness to this candle. So let's talk about literally earth, dirt, not rich soil, fertile soil. I'm talking about infertile, dried up, sun-dried soil. Winemakers actually don't like to give their grapes a lot of water. So if you go out in the vineyards and pick up the soil, it's usually incredibly dry and uh, infertile. And from my experience being out in the vineyards, picking up this dirt and smelling it, that's kind of what I'm getting here. There's this kind of ancient dustiness. Think about extinguished campfire. Now I'm going to be very clear here. I don't mean like you're outside having a campfire or a bonfire. I'm talking about the morning after. After that fire has been put out, it has been extinguished, and you walk up and there's just nothing but a pile of embers sitting there, that white, ashy material. If you pick that up and smell it, there's this, there's definitely this extinguished, burnt ashiness. Or think about uh, a fireplace, right? Think about a fireplace that hasn't seen fire in a really long time, you know, and you stick your head in that fireplace and you have that old lingering smell of fire once was here. Uh, think of Dick Van Dyke and, and Mary Poppins, right? The chimney sweep. He's got the soot all over his face. Definitely some uh, soot. Charcoal. So whether you're familiar with charcoal from barbecuing in the summertime or you've ever smoked out of a hookah before, there's this charcoal earthiness. So going back to that licorice root, you know, think of black licorice, Twizzlers black licorice. What about black crows? Remember black crows? They were like gumdrops, only they were all black licorice. What I'm getting at here is that there's a candy-esque black licorice aroma to this. And going off of that, root beer. And it makes sense, right? Because there's licorice in most root beers. But that image of root beer keeps coming up because there's this sweet creaminess. All the way in the background, there's that really nice sweet creaminess. Uh, makes me think of Barks root beer. Makes me think of Stewart's root beer. Makes me think of A&W root beer. In my head, I see a big cold mug of root beer with foam on the top. And honestly, if this was a glass of root beer, I would love to take a sip. Lastly, but probably the most interesting, if you've ever had or seen a gum, a chewing gum called Chowards Scented Gum, you can find it in pharmacies, you can find it in grocery stores, you can sometimes, sometimes find it in gas stations. But it's a very old product. Uh, it looks like little purple chiclets, little purple squares of gum. And it actually tastes almost exactly the way this candle smells. It's sweet. It has that patchouli uh, flavor to it. Definitely look for it when you're out. If you have any interest in actually chewing a gum that tastes like witch's brew, you've got to try it. And if you can't find it, check Amazon. I'm sure they have it on Amazon. So I asked everybody today what came to mind when I said the words witch's brew. What is it that the mind's eye paints when I use those words? And for me personally, when I hear witch's brew, I can't help it. All of those fun images come to mind when I think of the words witch's brew and that is why I've always been in love with this candle because not only does it fulfill that image, that portrait that I have in my mind, but I think it surpasses it as well. To me, this is a staple of the Halloween season. And uh, share your thoughts, please, down below. Share your thoughts. What do you think of this candle? Now, I just threw out a bunch of stuff. It's important that from this point on in these videos when I'm doing my sensory evaluation 
when I'm smelling these candles. If you disagree or you want to chime in, please do it. Comment below. Uh, it's important that we have your feedback. I want to hear what you say. I'm learning from you guys. So please, list below. If I'm off point, call me out on it, right? If you see something that I don't, put it in because I might just steal it from you. Uh, I'm always looking for new and interesting descriptors, new adjectives, new things to use when describing aromas. I had a blast doing this one. This was a really fun video for me and I want to thank you for watching. I also want to thank you if you've watched any of my previous videos. For those who have subscribed, welcome to the team. And for all of the folks who left comments on the previous videos, you know who you are. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much that means to me. It really does remind me that there's kindness in the world. So a special thanks to you guys. Look, I got tons of new great ideas. I'm planning everything out. I have a really cool agenda. I'm going to try to get these videos done and posted as soon as possible. But for now, enjoy Witch's Brew, and we'll see you guys real soon.